And speaking of exciting, as we had, you know, let off with, uh, we've been busting our ass to get some profiles out for you guys. You know, each week we're in here. I mean, even during some of the draft stuff, you guys are like dropping free agent names and stuff yeah. like that. So we're like, okay, we're going to give you guys what you want. And so we, again, tried to get a bunch of draft profiles, scheme fits, financial fits uh, for you guys up on the website. And so if you go to cover Football. Um, in the very top right, you're going to see Buffalo Bills free agent target. You click that, you're going to get this landing page. And we have, I want to say, up over 20 profiles already up on players that we think are financial or scheme fits. And we're talking all different tiers. Guys are like, I, I don't know if they can really afford this unless they make some moves financially with mm -hmm. contracts they already have. And guys are like, no one really even knows about, but that mm -hmm. are really good players and guys that caught our eye when we we're you know, scouring uh, the internet film and, and statistics. And so we're going to go over some of those guys tonight. So Anthony, let's kick off, man. Let's take a look at the free agent list that you prepared tonight. We're going to take a look and we're going to start at the bottom guys. All right. We're going to start at the bottom at eight, kind of work our way towards number one, number four list. for me, I'm on the offensive side of the ball wide receiver, Josh Reynolds uh, from yeah. the lions, uh, a guy that, you know, I said, he's a pros pro because he really, not he's not going to be a, a vertical guy he's not going to be a quick winner underneath in the quick game he's just does a he does everything good but not mm. great and, and and i don't mean that as a smack in the face as a um you know <laughs> when it comes to his game i honestly think that what he does would be really good for the bills and josh Allen and to add some stability to the offense as a wide receiver too greg thinks his uh, aav would probably be right around 5 million a year Five million guaranteed. Um, and, and some of my notes, as you guys can see in our profiles, I said he's a pros pro known for his smooth, stable running gate and precise route running. And I'm talking route running like really good nuance. So maybe he only mm -hmm. runs in the four fives, mid four fives, but his route running is so good. He excels in the short and intermediate areas by skilling routes that Gabe Davis kind of skilled, right? Digs, <laughs> posts, and stop routes. Um, he lacks that deep threat speed, but compensates with route nuance excellent body control on contested catches and the ability to pluck the ball out of the air before the defensive backs can make plays on the ball. And that's something you're going to see constantly. Once I hit play here uh, for the film, his ability to be QB friendly, to work back to the ball is just phenomenal. Adjust to inaccurate passes like that play on the back mm -hmm. hip. He does that all over his film. He is truly QB friendly. And even when he's covered in all areas of the field, he's open. If the quarterback trusts him and there were some drop issues at times, especially late last year in critical situations. Yeah. But I think he's a guy, if you put him in the bills offense as again, a wide receiver too, um, and, and flexing him out wide as a boundary guy, look at this route versus Snead. Look at him uncover mm -hmm. versus Snead on that play. Like that one stuck out to me when I was watching his film, uh, against the chiefs, look at the bottom of the screen, how he separates, get vertical. And then look at the separation at the top snaps that route off works back to the ball, and then he gets yards after the catch. So he's doing that against a top five corner in the mm. league there. I think you put him in the Bills offense, he'll have a great role. He'll add some stability, some consistency, some good route running, some trustworthy play from the wide receiver position. But again, if you're adding younger guys from the draft and free agency into the wide receiver room, he's the guy that these guys will look up to as that savvy veteran Dix is more of like, I'm a leader by example and, and motivation. Mm -hmm. This guy right here is he'll lead by example, but he'll also coach guys up. I think he's uh he'd be a good piece to add. And he, he wouldn't cost much if we're talking about uh, his contract. No, he's going to be an affordable guy, which is again, the lens that we have to look at everyone through yes. uh, this yeah. off season. Um, I also like the, the pedigree he comes from like the success that he had in that Rams offense, the mm. success that he had in this lions offense. Mm -hmm. He comes from, well-coached, well-skilled, precision-based offenses where you, every every step in your release matters. Every inch from the line of scrimmage you are, the end man on the line matters. Where you align, how you align. Also, when you, these clips are doing a good job too, and like his versatility, like he gives you that inside outside piece, and that's a nice thing to have it to do when a dude that's six foot three, almost two hundred pounds at the wide receiver spot, and your signature skill 
uh, label for him, like the pros pro is just spot on. Like he's just a professional wide receiver. Mm -hmm. He does everything above average. He's not the sexiest guy. He just continues to find ways to win. And the reason he finds ways to win is because he's just a craftsman at that wide receiver position. He's not somebody that's overly twitched up or traced up that is just winning with pure athleticism. He understands leverage. He understands spacing. He understands timing. He's that guy that, you know, if you're a quarterback, he's going to be in his spot. If you're supposed to take four yards and sit, he's going to be there no matter what. If it's off coverage, if it's press, whatever the whatever the coverage is, if you expect him to be in position A, he'll be in it. And that beca- that's mm-hmm. because of the time he spent with the Rams and the time that he spent in Detroit. And, and even to though- add that, Anthony, yeah. real quick, you talked about the Rams and, and the Lions. That's all great, too, for the complexity and you know how mm-hmm. much they throw at those guys from the football IQ standpoint, but also – the willingness to block in those run games. Yep. You got to be able to block in those run games from those teams. And he's a guy willing to do that. And again, he's got some of that size. So um, I think, again, he's just a well-rounded wide receiver. And when I popped on his film, like I knew he's always been solid, but the critical moments, like the, the catches he was making, the things what he was doing in that offense, I was just impressed, especially, like I said, the route running ability to uncover with his route running, not his speed, yes. not his physicality, his footwork, how he sets up the break point. It was all just smooth, efficient. And and again, when you want some stability, he will be there because for years we talked about the Bills receivers kind of running those unorthodox type routes yeah. and those option routes. And there's really no timing to it. Well, if the Bills, as we assume do, scale back some of those option routes and kind of structure the offense more for Josh so he can go through progressions more and and a little easier. He's the kind of guy that will add that stability to that straight drop back game. And and, and even some of those clips, even some of that play action shot calls where he snaps a route off from a post to a stop or to a dig route. Um, he's going to add a, a lot of good stuff to the receiver room across the board. And you also have to think too, like keep in mind with a Reynolds or a Noah Brown, like if they're coming in and being quote unquote, like wide receiver two, that doesn't necessarily mean they're option two in this offense. Like no, Diggs no, no, is no. option one. Yeah. Dalton Kincaid is probably option two. Khalil Shakir or James good Cook, point. three or four, something like that. So you're boundary guy for, yes, you are looking for a wide receiver two with a specific skill set to win in certain ways Mm -hmm. that fits the offense and complements the rest of the weapon hierarchy that you have. Now, again, if you could get Romo Dunze in the draft, like awesome, your wide receiver two is phenomenal. He can probably be target two. He can do everything great, but also with what you have from an already like an established standpoint, you're looking with someone that ticks specific boxes. If you can get someone that ticks all of them, amazing. But given the price point you're living at, like the Reynolds of the world, the Noah Browns of the world, they provide value to the Bills because of their skill set and the role they can occupy for that cost. Yeah. Again, that costs like what five a year. That's probably even yeah. on the high. Who knows? Uh, for wide receivers, guys, like that's super cheap. <laughs> Let's keep yeah. that in perspective. <laughs> that's super cheap. You're talking Gabe Davis as that wide receiver two is going to get probably, you know, 12 to 15 million a year. Like getting yeah. Josh Reynolds for that five mil AV AAV is just crazy cheap.